Hey yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. It's your boy Jesse Keegan. And the girl Fanny Lungo. And we are Fanny, Fanny and Jesse. Jesse. So today we're gonna have a reaction video. And before we even get started, guys, I want to say thank <laughs> you for everyone out there who's been subscribing. You guys are super amazing. Today we're gonna do a reaction, and this is also another emotional video from Abu Bakr. Secrets that made Umar Abin Al Khattab cry. So without any further ado, guys, let's get it. Umar radiallahu anhu says, when Abu Bakr became Khalifa, this is extremely beautiful by the way. I want you to actually put yourself in Medina right now. You live there, Abu Bakr is the Khalifa. He leads the Salah, he leads the prayer. He said every day after Fajr, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu would go in an opposite direction of his house and he would go deep into the desert. It was very curious, right? what does he do out there? So Umar radiallahu anhu said, I'd watch him every single day. He'd go to Salat al-Fajr and then Abu Bakr does not return home. He just walks far away into the desert. So he said, every day I'd wonder, ila aina yahruj. Where does he go? Where does he go? Where does he go? He said, one day I said to myself, la atba'ani. That's it. I'm going to go follow him and find out what he's doing. I just can't get over this curiosity of mine. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, I kept the pace from him to where he was at the end of my eyesight, meaning I, I walked just as far away to where I could still see him. And then he said, I saw him go into this beat up old house. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, I quickly went and I hid behind. And he said, he spent a long time in there. It wasn't like a short amount of time. He spent a long time until after the sun was up, meaning it was getting hot. This is after Fajr, this is way past Duha, way past sunrise, and it got hot. And then Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu left the home and he made his way back to Medina. He said, this is way out of the city of Medina now. This isn't even the city of Medina right now. Way out of the city of Medina. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, I waited until I could no longer see him, meaning he made his way back to Medina. And Umar radiallahu anhu said, I knocked on the door, okay? And he said, this woman opened the door. She was elderly, she was frail, she was blind, and there were a bunch of little kids running around, okay? So I said to her, As-salamu alayki, ma sha'nukum ya amatullah. I said, peace be on to you. What is your situation, O servant of Allah? And she said that I am a blind woman, and I have no one to take care of me, and I also have these orphans with me. You know, and the implication, Allahu Alam, her kids died, left behind, these are her grandchildren, or these were orphans. Somehow, it's her, and it's some orphan children. And she says, I have no one to take care of me, and these orphans. Umar radiallahu anhu said, who is that visitor that comes to you every single day? The answer, she says, I don't know who he is. لا يذكر لي اسمه أبدا. He never once shared his name with me. <laughs> He never bothered to tell me his name. Umar radiallahu anhu said, well, what does he do? Qalat jazahullah khair. She said, may Allah reward him. Every morning he comes. Listen, by the way, she details it. She says, he cleans my home. He washes our clothes. He grinds our wheat. He bakes our bread. He cooks our breakfast. And then he leaves. Subhanallah, think about that. If this was the only narration we had about Abu Bakr, it's incredible. <laughs> Seriously, the leader, the head of the Ummah, the Khalifa, the most important man in the Ummah right now, with his station, with his status, and he goes out every morning to this house and he doesn't even tell the woman what his name is. He's just, just consider me a secret fa'al khair, right? Just some good doer. Washes the clothes, cleans the house, grinds the wheat, bakes the bread, cooks the breakfast, and then makes his way back to govern the Ummah. That is absolutely incredible. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, every single day, <laughs> Like, is this really what he does every single day? She said, every day, may Allah bless him. Umar radiallahu anhu said, do you pay him anything? She said, nothing. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu started to cry and he said, at al-khulafa'a ba'daka ya Abu Bakr. You have exhausted every successor of yours, oh Abu Bakr. You've exhausted us. Anyone that comes after you is exhausted. <laughs> Because this is a standard that is impossible for us to meet. A gem here, by the way, very important. Can you imagine how many deeds of Abu Bakr that history has never recorded? <laughs> you know, the books of the Fada'il, the virtues of Abu Bakr, the things that he used to do. Can you imagine how many of those secrets he actually managed to hide? And why did he not think of himself too good to still do that thing? And by the way, a lesson for all of us. If you're someone who does some khair that everyone knows about, you better have some khair that only Allah knows about. Right? You better have some khair that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about. And let it be an involved khair too, okay? An involved form of good. Not just a secret charity, but this is something that, that has a spiritual reminder and effect on him too, right? Going and visiting this elderly woman and her orphans every single day and doing those things.
What do you think? <laughs> um, I think it's really for one to do such a thing. Uh, I find it to be not at this time and age that we live in today. Just anyone coming to you. Is it just anyone or someone probably that you know that comes to your house and bakes and cooks and everything and he doesn't want a penny and just walks away? Do you understand? I mean, probably this would have worked probably back in the days, but still, how will I allow just anyone or somebody just to come into my house and do whatever they did and not be able to just give them uh, a penny and all they say is like, no, I'm, I don't want anything, I'm just here to help. I think it's it's something that... Um, um, people have to sit down and think about it. You just, you, you, as a person, I think it it, it tells us to just um, just do good and just walk, go. You know, just be the person that can be able to help someone and not expecting them to give you something for your service or whatnot. But again, <clears throat> imagine in today's world, the president of Turkey coming to your house and just cooks and bakes and washes your clothes and then leaves. It could be insane. It would be really, really insane. So these are stories that are mind-blowing type of stories that it takes you... Um, I mean, it, 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 it makes you sit down and think. Was it, is it even possible? Or there's something behind it? Or it's a parable, you know? So, but what I'm getting from all this is that just, uh, I mean, just help, help someone and respect, just help and walk away, you know. Just in the Bible, there's a verse that says, uh, um, I don't know if this is the correct quote, um, um, just help and, and walk your way or something like that. Just, just uh, uh, do, do, do good and walk away, yes. What do you think? I want to repeat the first thing that you said. Which I feel one? like in this day and age, some people still do this. You sure? Yeah. Where? I want those kind Somewhere of people. Somewhere in the world. <laughs> I want them. I'm just saying, you get if you want it, you can do everything for yourself. I want those people. What man. I'm saying is, um, do you know, in this situation, imagine you're not related to someone, you just see someone not being able to fend for themselves you're telling me you yourself the way i know you you're telling me you can't help that person they can't fend for themselves so i go to the house cook wash their clothes hang their clothes and say i feel sense. like you do such a thing <sighs> except the washing parts there are levels to everything you know of course uh, I might want to find myself doing it, but to what degree am I doing that? Do you understand? Of course, one day I can just wake up in the morning. Maybe my neighbors have issues and whatnot. I can decide to just go in there, help them with one or two things, but not to just invade their space to a point where I even just beg for them. <laughs> and cook for them. I'm if sure they are not able enough, the okay. Let's say for yeah, that we've exactly. Given. Let's say for example, if we have a neighbor or something, God forbid, if we have a neighbor that maybe he had an accident and there's no one to take care of him or her, and probably they want someone to cook for them. Do you understand? I will understand it, but you know what I can do for for ourselves. We can be cooking at our house and then you know just take the food to her. She will eat and all those kind of stuff. Do you understand? But then that if it was, be, imagine you have to go to Guinea. Yeah, so you'd cook the food from here and then walk all the way. It's much better compared to, imagine now going there and you don't have the resources that you wanted to cook the food. Maybe in your house it's much quicker to make food and you feel more comfortable there. Do you understand? It's, I don't know. I feel like, guys, just let me know in the comment section below. What, do you, what will you, in this position, what could you do or what will you do? I mean... I still stand by the fact that people like this still exist. In this world, yes, <laughs> in this world, people still exist. I want Otherwise, this kind of people. Ish. Why you're able bodied for what? I know I'm able bodied, but mm -hmm. excuse is yes, these people do exist in those um, 
disability homes. I'm Let kidding, me guys. ignore you. I'm kidding. So anyway. what I'm saying is, um, you can help someone. You won't have Bernice. With the help that we want to give people now, is that we want to put our name stamps on the help that we're providing. Exactly. Because That's I what I'm saying. With something bringing you that water, I want you to tell the entire world. Exactly. That That's what I'm saying. Water. That's what I'm saying. It's really hard. To find this kind of people in this but day they and do age. Exist. Look, for I'm example, just saying the problem with us who are helping, we want to put our. We want to document everything. Do you understand? So that you can show the other people that I'm helping them, so I can get also more funding. Do you understand? How many times? It's not even about funding. Some do you people know? Just want to be praised for the sake of. Do you know? I opened, something. When I open a YouTube channel, and I see. It can be Muslim Christians or any foundation that they are helping people, you know, and they are documenting it. But again, you can see down there, there's a timestamp or maybe there's a lower third saying that um, you can donate this amount to, you understand. I have nothing wrong with that. Do you understand? But to what degree are you doing all this for? I understand there are so many foundations out there. It's they get foundation. the money. They get the money. And then they don't even actually put it into the task that they're asking for. That's true. You see? So, I mean, we, we really have to be careful with the charities that are out there for, for the sake of helping people. And I'm seeing it. They're, they're actually using the weaker people to actually obtain this money. And it's so sad. I open YouTube, uh, YouTube whatever, every day. And I see the adverts that are coming in. I'm like, if this is genuine enough, uh, if this is genuine enough, God bless you guys. But if this is not genuine enough, only God is going to deal with you. Do you understand? So, in this aspect, um, in this day and age, so many people will want to document it so that they can be praised as heroes and heroes or something. And that's what I'm saying. If you it's know. a... Stop making up words. Okay. Stop. If it's a foundation, charity, organization, whatever so you want. If it's a foundation, whatever it is, I think I have no problem with them documenting something. Because imagine they we've got a foundation and they want to partner with us. So where is the proof that you've been doing charity work? Yeah. Do you understand? Also, you mentioned something saying sometimes people donate, but that the funds don't even go to the same people that... Uh, I think you should be ashamed if they're going to ask for money and use it for something else. Because we people donating expect that whatever we put in, cutters for those needs that you've said you need to cover and just be genuine be genuine about your help don't do it for the camera don't do it for the world to praise you to sing praises about you be genuine i think the most genuine thing is helping someone or doing something for someone and not speaking about it till you leave this world until you're buried or something like that anything else babe? yeah just just be genuine Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and we'll see you in our next reaction video. Deuces.